Hi, folks. Welcome to another episode of Film Study. This is Ken McCusick. It's time for this week's matchups episode with co-host Frazier Tafar. Uh, we're talking about the defense in uh, in this episode. Frazier, how you doing? Doing good, Ken. Coming off a really tough loss against Cleveland last week and uh, looking for a bounce back game against a hot Denver Broncos team. Yeah, they're they're hot. They're playing good defense right now. Um, offensively, they they don't offer as much. But uh, where do you think is the most important point for them to start? I think starting out with the defense, first point is Ravens pass rush versus Denver's pass protection. Uh, no secret, the Ravens have had an issue generating pass rush since Van Noy has fell off with his production earlier this year. Uh, this week poses a different threat against another mobile rookie quarterback who can make the necessary throws. Uh, keeping gap integrity and cage rushing Knicks will prevent him from making the explosive plays. Force him into some, or allow him to make some unforced errors, you're thinking? Yep, I'm thinking uh, he has the opportunity. I mean, he has the tendency to be a little trigger happy. So just capitalizing on that, uh opposite of what we did last week with Jameis dropping interception is this week we have to capitalize and catch them. All right. Well, fair enough. The, the Ravens also offered Jameis 4.23 seconds to throw, which is just ridiculously long, uh, yep. you know, particularly for a pocket quarterback like Jameis. You wouldn't just expect that. Lamar was second in the whole NFL at 3.53 to give you an idea. So seven tenths of a second longer for Jameis. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to, first of all, I agree with you that the pass rush needs to get there. I think how they get the pass rush um, it, it has to start from the inside. Um, but let me, let me go to that in a minute because I think there is one other way they can get pass rush. They can get pass rush by um, sending numbers in this game. So if, if they, you know, you can cage rush them, you can try and get, get uh, a, a decent pass rush with four. I'm not convinced the current Ravens are up to that. It really requires a healthy Mike, Michael Pierce or Travis Jones to begin that interior pass rush. Uh, you know, the command of a double on the inside, some stunt and twist ability that goes with that. Um, they just, Travis Jones wasn't playing like that at all this last week. Didn't look like he could push off that knee at all. Uh, that foot, that ankle, I guess it was. Um, it it uh, he's, looks like a different kind of player. Um, he's critical to the inside. All the other players they have depend on Travis Jones being good, starting with Matt Abike, who's his running mate most of the time. Um, the other problem that the Ravens have is, is what I want to bring up next, is the interior defensive line versus the Broncos offensive line. Um, they need to find enough, first of all, active interior defensive linemen that they can even line up against these guys. Yeah. Um, I, I <laughs> I'll start with special team sacrifices are needed if necessary. Um, this is not a week to carry an extra special teams player. This is a week to carry an extra defensive lineman, uh, yeah. particularly if they if they feel like they have to carry a running back. And Chris Collier seems like he might be the guy with Ali out now. And I'm guessing they're not going to bring Keaton Mitchell back this week. So if they're going to carry Collier on the lineup uh, in the um, uh, in the game day roster. Um, that's okay, but they got to make sure that they that they sit down another special teams player, Kane, Braid, um, even a linebacker potentially, and and make sure they have enough interior defensive alignment. What is the hesitation to uh, move with? Oh, I'm blanking on his name. Sorry, that practice squad Wormley. Yes. What's the hesitation to go to him? I, I, I'm not sure, but he might not be ready to play is is all I can think. Or he might be hurt because they don't publish the practice squad injury report. Right, right. So, so there could be some problem there. If somebody gets moved to injured reserved on the practice squad, then they publish it. But otherwise, they don't. Like Kadir Ishmael is there right now. Um, mm. But, you know, they have a few different options they can they can use on the interior defensive line. They can to, to manage to, to get enough guys, frankly, ready to go to play. Um, Brent Urban has been ruled out. So he's, he's not going to be available. Broderick Washington returned to practice. Appears like he's going to play. Jones returned to practice. He's questionable, but I assume that he'll play. Uh, and that means they have Wormley available and Josh Tupo available. Could get them up to, I'll call it 4.2 this week because I'm expecting a little better performance from Jones than last week. But he was about worth 0.1 of a lineman last week. <laughs> then, then they have other options. They, have, they could... Go back to a little bit of Ricard there if it got to be a real emergency. I don't think they're going to do that if they didn't do it last week. 
I don't know when they would do it because they were down to they were down to um, really one healthy lineman, but two total linemen at the end of that game. Uh, and you know the other thing they can do is they can reduce the amount of IDL usage in this game. So the way they do that is with rush packages. A rush yep. package uses three outside linebackers. They bring one more guy in. Usually, Tavius Robinson has been quite good there, um, yep. but they have other guys who can who can do it as well. Even Ngakwe can start on the inside um, if necessary. He's he's more adept starting outside. Um, they've done some good things already this year with Van Noy in a standing position, um, kind of opposite or just inside a tackle, like a four eye or a five. Uh, they could do that again if they if they really wanted to, um, but they've got to somehow find a way to manage that that um, workload. I will say that when the Ravens played the fewest or some of the fewest defensive linemen that they played in recent history, they've done it with use of the race car package, which means you don't have any defensive linemen on the field on third down. You just bring in four outside linebackers. You use one inside linebacker. You have a dime with that. Um, I think it would make a lot of sense for this particular Ravens team because I don't think you can you can ask Matt Abike to hold up for anything like the snap county at last week. And I actually think you need him more against the run. It's just really strange, but I think that that's what they need this week is they need more early down defensive line snaps, particularly in the event that Denver gets control of the game and is trying to run the ball down the Ravens' throats, as I expect they may do. If that's the case, you're really going to need three defensive linemen on a lot of on a lot of plays and not just two. So uh, they, they they've got things they they're going to have to do that are seemingly very extreme. Yeah, and I anticipate what you said in the latter half of your statement. I expect Sean Payton to come in and try and establish the run, especially with a rookie quarterback. Uh, and the Ravens have seemed to have shown to have struggled with the run in past weeks. Um, moving on to my second point. I have the Ravens back end versus the Broncos pass game. Denver's offense has came along very good in the past couple of weeks. Uh, they're maximizing sudden opportunities, and uh, Knicks has been playing in rhythm. Sean Payton is a great offensive mind, and he will give or fits all game. Uh, I expect him to dial up concepts to take advantage of our two highs, con- of our two high rolls. Uh, it will be on or to put the players in position to confuse the rookie. You know, their, their wide receiver group is not particularly impressive. They have little Jordan Humphrey as their second most used guy. And he's, he's not a particularly um, (laughs) difficult guy. They have Mims, they have Franklin Uh, Cortland Sutton is a guy who appears to have a fair amount of respect around the NFL, but honestly not a particularly impressive receiver. He's just a big guy. That's pretty much all. Um, they have Devon Vele, who was another guy that um, uh, our Know Your Foe uh, guest this week was uh, Ryan Edwards was was very positive on. He actually picked him as a player who matches up best against the Ravens on the offense, uh, which is interesting. But they do have a pretty good offensive line, and it's going to be a tough game for for the Ravens to get in on um, uh, on Knicks and really create pressured opportunities without – taking it to another level in terms of the pass rush, I think. And um, I come back to the notion that defense really requires variance. And this is a game where I wish or would. This holiday season, find the perfect gift and spark something special with Uncommon Goods. No need to stress. Uncommon Goods makes shopping easy with hand-picked, unique gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Think gifts that bring out the smiles, the laughter, and that, yes, it's exactly what I wanted moment. They scour the globe for one-of-a-kind, handmade, remarkable items, and they always seem to know the perfect gift. I got these Camden Yards drinking glasses on it that have a nice etch of Oreo Park and the skyline around it. Check out their new officially licensed NFL collection for you Raven fans. When you shop Uncommon Goods, you're supporting small businesses and independent artists. Many of the products are made in small batches, so make sure to get yours before they sell out. With meaningful gifts from personalized items to special finds for kids, sports fans, and book lovers, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. Plus, for every purchase, they donate $1 to a nonprofit. Over $3 million donated so far. To get your 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash ravens. That's uncommongoods.com slash ravens for 15% off. Hurry, this deal won't last. Uncommon Goods. 
were all out of the ordinary. Stay away from safe tendencies and embrace the um, embrace the need for variance in this unit and, and go after the quarterback with numbers, crowd the line of scrimmage with numbers. So the degree it causes some problems, you live with it in this game. It's gonna you're gonna give up some plays, you're gonna make some plays. At least the Ravens have Lamar Jackson and a reasonable chance to to yep. make a comeback in a game like this. And uh, something critical that the Ravens have seemed to do this year is when they do want us in the house, they're playing off coverage, which really gives the quarterback an opportunity to take a three-step drop and let it rip, kind of like what Jameis did on that fourth down, mm-hmm. uh, third down last week. Um, I anticipate us to, if we're going to show pressure, press it to the line and then make the quarterback make a play because the pass rush almost did get there on that third down. If they were to jam, that just gives them half a second more f- longer to get home. So I anticipate those kind of adjustments coming this week, especially in the in the pressure category. Hey, you know, that, that 7-0 rush where they gave up the 38-yard touchdown, it could have been worse. I mean, honestly, they, they, the team needed a high-variance play at that point. They could have either gotten a loss, which would have put them in an excellent position to win the game on fourth down. If they get a sack, then, then you know, it's probably – they can't kick the field goal anymore, so they're probably looking at having to go for it on fourth and long, and then you, you have a real chance to win the game. If, if you don't get the sack, one of the things that was not too bad to do was give up a touchdown on that play because it left the Ravens 59 seconds to move down the field. If there had been a 20-yard completion, much worse situation for the Ravens, because that then becomes a kneel-kneel kick situation and almost 100% chance they give it up. So, you know, there are going to be opportunities for that kind of – it doesn't have to be a touchdown or nothing, but sometimes it's 20 yards or a sack, and you got to be willing to take those kind of risks. You you, you have to be willing to, to, to do some of that on defense, and I'd like to see more of that from Orr. This is a, this is a unit right now, as constituted, that I think would do much better with Rex Ryan or Wink Martindale at the helm yep. than it is with Orr, who's who's a little bit less of an obvious risk taker. And I, I second that notion because this defense, for some reason, it, we don't have that many players that were missing from last year carrying over. I don't know why the sit back and make the quarterback make the mistake ideology isn't working this year but i think like you're mentioning attacking these offenses seems to be the only way to go about it now this year all right maybe nate wiggins makes a play he's back he's had his hands on the football a number of times but maybe this is his day to make a play uh the other players back is marcus williams at least according to harbaugh i said he would play uh i don't know what that means i don't know i don't know if, if that means he's starting at at free safety i would think it probably does but he could mean some lesser role for him. Um, but anyway, uh, they need to figure out how to move on with Williams at free safety, in my opinion, or they lose important optionality on defense. The, the big one being they can't really play the dime without having, yep. having him out there. So and I, think Williams, the, and I think the minimum that we see Mitt Williams is in the dime if we don't see him at starting free safety because last week proved that we need some reinforcement of that position, uh, whether it really be Kyle Hamilton or Eddie Jackson. We need to have some kind of someone to solidify the ball hawk position on this team, and uh, Marcus can come back into his role and take it take it away. Yeah, it, and honestly, it would be a very big deal if he plays the back end. Um, you know, you've got other options too because you can play our Darius Washington on the back end with Williams. Eddie Jackson doesn't actually need to be involved. But right. you, you, you ideally, at a minimum, Williams would come in on third down, play that free safety role, slide Jackson over, move Hamilton up into the dime, um, maybe Ardarius or Mollette in the oh. slot. They seem to be more, yep. you know, satisfied with Mollette at this point, um, or or maybe Humphrey in the slot again because Humphrey may be back and and uh, Wiggins and and uh, Stevens look like they're on the outside. But in any case, the point being that. Uh, th- that gives you a much more formidable set of playmakers there. Uh, Jackson, honestly, has been a big disappointment this year. I, I'm not understanding, you know, why Williams kind of was first to be put out over Jackson. I know they're unhappy with Williams' play. They should be. But Williams, on the other hand, is kind of the only choice at free safety, while Jackson is kind of 
a choice that didn't work out at the split field role. I mean, they tried him, and and I, I think they they understand it didn't work. Um, if you go back to going back to the dime for a second, though, Ravens are five and zero oh when they've had twenty plus dime snaps in the game. They're zero oh and three in the other three games where they all had two or fewer dime snaps. So wow. I, I, it's it's not maybe obvious to everybody that this is true, but the move to the dime was a big deal in week three. It really really turned the defense around in a lot of ways to get Hamilton up there. It wasn't a matter that Simpson was so bad, but it got another productive player on the field and Ardarius Washington initially or or allowing Humphrey to move to slot for the early part of those games. It was just it was a it was a positive move for the defense. And those are the highest leverage snaps. Those it's been between, I think, 20 and 34 so far this year, snaps in each game. And they're the, they're the ones that really matter. They're the, they're the third down. They're the obvious passing situations. It's a lot of the ones where you're defending a lead. Um, it hasn't been perfect by any stretch, but it's been better to have that dime defense on the field making plays than, than it has been to have a nickel, which is what they had this last week against Cleveland again. Uh, I think also if you look at Hamilton's season, his season has kind of ascended. And didn't play all that well the first two weeks when they weren't using him in a dime role. Has played much better since. So the first two weeks he was strong safety and um, slot corner, and as a big nickel, um, it's just uh, adding that dime role for him has been good for his play as well. He's been very very productive since. Uh, and it's just unfortunate that that the Williams absence uh, forced him to have to abandon the dime. Yeah, and that's something that I was banging on the door for week one against the uh, after the Kansas City game the way we deployed base yeah. and nickel with uh, Harrison and Simpson. Great to see them get to that point. It seemed like it took a little bit, but definitely took a step back last week. Um, there must have been some real nasty things said by Marcus Williams for him not to be able to even play last week because you just don't start a star player because of some – minor disagreement it had to be a major issue and uh what marcus thinks the ideology should be and what maybe or thinks should be happening moving forward with the defense yeah I, I i i wouldn't really necessarily know but i my guess would be it's some sort of subordination issue and that that um he probably harbaugh wanted williams to apologize to him finally got him to do it or, or, or they, you know, at least came to terms on what's going on. But I mean, part of it is what's going on on the field. I mean, they can't, they can't live with Eddie Jackson back at free safety another week. So, oh. uh, so hopefully, this is uh, uh, this is this situation is behind us now, and the Ravens will uh, will be able to move forward. All right, always a pleasure uh, doing this show with you, uh, Frazier. How can people talk football with you online if they want to? You guys can reach me at Twitter slash X at f underscore rave eight. That's f underscore r a v e eight. All right. Look for the these episodes on Saturday and Sunday. Sometimes it's two on Saturday, one on Sunday. Depends on kind of the time of game. But uh, this will be the time slot we're we're typically in from from here on out. If you have questions, hit use uh, hashtag Film Study Mailbag for those. Always looking for that. In particular, I might put up a little matchups uh, uh, queuing up for the uh, on Twitter for that. But uh, you hit me up anyway, and if it's in the mailbag, we'll try and get to it. Thanks again for listening. For Frazier Tafar, this is Ken McCusick saying goodbye. We'll talk to you next week on Matchups. 